Hello again. This time we're actually looking at two equations. So we've got two equations with two variables. This is a very common question in math. In fact, depending in grade nine, in high school, you probably looked at a lot of questions like this, but maybe forget how to do it. So we're gonna look at how, or maybe you've never saw it before. Either way, we're gonna look at it today. This would be related often to the idea of solving where two lines intersect. Where two lines, the actual x, y coordinate, where they hit. So one thing I'm gonna do right off the bat to make my life easier in, in terms of referring to equations for you is I'm gonna number them. So I'm gonna write the first one. I'm gonna call it one just to make my life easy and I can refer to this as equation one from now on. And it is three x minus six equaling y plus two. Whereas equation two is four y equals seven minus eight x. And so if we want to actually solve for these, we've got to take one equation and plug it into the other. We've got to get rid of y or x in one of these equations. So I want to look and see where I can solve for y or x. Well, all of these terms have something multiplying, but if I look at this y right here, which wasn't the best drawn, but this y right here has nothing in front of it. If I could isolate for y in equation one, I can plug it into equation two and then just have x. And just like we did before, solve for x. So, I gotta get y on its own. So I'm taking equation one, starting with that, and I'm gonna try and solve for y. So what am I gonna have to do? Well, let's see. I'm actually writing it a third time. Kinda redundant here to have the equation so many times, but it helps. I wanna get rid of the two. I gotta get rid of them plus two, subtract two. And again, I'm gonna do that from both sides. So. This becomes 3x minus 6 minus 2 is minus 8. All of that equal to y. So I now have an equation where I know what y is. Well, see equation 2 where I have 4y? Well, I know y is equal to this. I mean, I don't know what x is yet, but I know y is the same as saying all of this on this side. So I can replace that y with this term right here. And that's what I'll do. So now I'm using equation 2. And what do I got? Four times y, or four times three x minus eight. Just like you've seen in probably other math cases, if I said x was two, well I could replace x with two. Well in this case, y is just something more complicated, so I'm replacing y with this term here. And that's still equal to what's on the other side, seven minus eight x. And now if you look, this probably looks a lot like some of the other problems we had in some of the earlier levels. I've got to solve for x. Well, if I want to do that, I've got to actually get rid of this bracket. Got to get x's that I can combine. So multiply the 4 in, 12x minus 32 equals 7 minus 8x. Want to get x's on one side, numbers on the other, doesn't matter which. I can bring the 8x over if I add 8x to both sides. So what do I get? 8x plus 12x, 20 x minus 32, and that's equal to seven, because these cancel. Well, want to bring the numbers over, so plus 32, 20 x, no, 26, ugly numbers, but 20 x, that's equal to 39. And finally, as always, I want to get x on its own, so what do I got to do? Divide by 20. And we get x equals 39 over 20. And might not be able to see that. Just in case you can't, I'm going to write it over here. This keeps track of things for me anyway. x equals 39 over 20. I know this now. I'm good. Now, it would be nice if it was one number higher, could divide it out, get a nice even number, but hey. Fractions are okay, remember that. Not every math problem works out to a nice perfect number. Um, it's just how life works. So, what do we got? We got x. I know what x is. I can plug it into either equation and solve for y. Well, why don't I use equation one? I've already got y in terms of all this, so it's an easier one to use. And so what do I got? Three, remember I'm basically taking equation one here. 
I've already solved y in terms of these things by bringing it over. So I'm using the simplified version just to save myself some time. And I've got 3 times x. Well, we just saw x is 39 over 20 minus 8. All equals y. Great. Well, I want to multiply that in. And you know what? Make things a little clearer. Let's draw a line down the middle, separating it all. So what do we got? 3 times 39. So we've got, what, 111 over 20. Nope. So what do we, my bad, 117. <laughs> Might as well just leave it running. I'll crop that middle. <laughs> Woo, that's sad. That is so sad. Okay. So, we got to multiply that in. We got 3 times 39. So, what do we got? We got 117 over 20. Minus 8 equals y. Remember, if I want to combine these, they have to have the same denominator. Same term on the bottom. Well, if I want it to still be equal to 8, I have to figure out what divided by 20 is equal to 8. Or in other words, multiply 8 by 20. So, I get 117 over 20 minus 160 divided by 20 equals y. Now they're the same on the bottom, I can combine them. So, what am I going to do? I do 117 minus 160, or in other words, minus 43 over 20 equals y. And that is the second part of my solution. y, x, I've solved both. This would be, again, if we were solving an equation of a line, this would be the coordinate where these two lines hit, where they meet. Well, in this case, we solved x and y, and that's all we need to do.